Okay, let's keep going. Your anxiety and fear. Your brain is the limbic system quite involved. And especially amygdala, amygdala is your panic button. When you feel anxious, super anxious, that's the amygdala. So that's your uh, that's the cross section of the mice's brain. They call the coronal section. Uh, this area, this amygdala. And this for fear and anxiety. And it, a lot of experiment in rodents been done about uh, amygdala, amygdala and the anxiety. And they would do this kind of task. They call the open and closed arm task. Because the, the mice naturally, they, they want to hide in the closed arm. They feel safe. And they don't want to be exposed. But their nature curiosity will driven them to come here. Once they feel safe, they'll come out, explore the open arm. So they can measure how much time they spend in the open arm and closed arm and know how, how anxious they feel. And or they will use the open field test. And you found the rodent naturally want to hide in the corner. They feel safer there. They got less uh, exposed to the center. They feel exposed. And they can measure the time they stay, stay in the center and in the corner to know how anxious they are. And they found after they damage amygdala, they damage this area. And the mice lose their nature fear. They don't feel anxious anymore. They will come to explore in those five minutes. They will spend four minutes, 30 seconds in the in the open arm. They explore here and there, feel fun. And in the open field test, they will spend more time in the center. So that's how they found, okay, that's the area, amygdala. Uh, that's your anxiety panic button. And why we need to be anxious? Why do we need anxiety? You think about anxiety, there's, there's nothing good, right? You feel too anxious, you cannot have your normal daily life. And it turns out through evolution, we need to feel anxious. Because in the animal's world, even though they're just drinking water, and the next second, this can happen. A lot of dangerous events can happen. So they need to have certain level of anxious. If they, they are not anxious any at all, well, they, they probably uh, win the Darwin's lottery and they, they won't be able to pass their gene to next generation. And through evolution, well, all the survived animals, they have a certain level of anxiety. So that, that actually helped them to survive. But if you have too much anxiety and they become a disease, it's called a panic attack. Uh, happens about 1.6% of people, uh, women, twice more than men, than, than men. And a panic attack, there's too much anxious. And usually it takes for a few minutes. And during those few minutes, there's your panic button being activated, your amygdala being activated, and it will activate your sympathetic nervous system. Because this, this work, like your body is fighting the bear. It's like you, you see a big bear. Uh, coming towards you and all your body need to respond to fight so you are able to survive. So it will trigger your sympathetic response and fight or flight response. And that will include increase your breathing rate, increase your heart rate, uh, inhibit your digestive function and release a lot of stress hormone and make your blood sugar level increase because you are ready to fight. Your muscle need a lot of sugar, turn the sugar into ATP. So all these response, you found uh, people have panic attack. They report, okay, they have all these symptoms. And they're actually due to super activated sympathetic response. Uh, most of them, not lethal, you just take a few minutes and they disappear. If you have panic attack for too long, and I, I did have two students, they told me they have panic attack for 30 minutes to one hour, and that's too long. Because their breathing rate is so fast, and it takes so long, so your body, your oxygen and CO2 level is actually maintained. It's called a homeostasis. You need to have a stable environment. And you want to get rid of, of CO2, you want to get in oxygen, but you still need a little bit of CO2 in the body. They need to maintain that normal range because CO2 dissolved in your blood become carbonic acid. It actually helps you to maintain your body pH. Your blood is a buffer. And when you have panic attack, you're breathing so fast, you get more oxygen in. That's the purpose, because they want to have more oxygen in for your 
a muscle to use the oxygen and glucose produce ATP. But also you get too much CO2 out. So it turn out you get too much CO2 out, uh, you, are, you lose the carbonic acid. Your body actually become alkalosis, become too basic. They call the respiratory alkalosis. So that that's uh, it happens in some patients, like they have panic attack, and they their breathing rate is too high for too long. So and eventually they have the respiratory alkalosis, and it can be lethal because your body pH it need to be maintained around seven point four. So your blood pH is a little bit basic, and when you go out of this range. You can get feel sick and serious case. You can die. So if if they go to the emergency room, uh, the doctor won't treat their panic attack. They don't care about their panic attack, but actually treat their respiratory alkalosis. And let's look at the lie detector. The lie detector it never tell you this person is lying or telling the truth. The lie detector only detect the physiological response. Your breathing rate your heart rate, your blood pressure, and your skin conductivity. Uh, because when you're nervous, you sweat more, sympathetic response. So you found the light detector only detects your, your physiological response. And that's why we need a person to analyze, look at the data, and to identify this person is telling the truth or this person is lying. Because when we are lying and we couldn't help it, our sympathetic system will be more activated. It's like your brain feel like, okay, you're lying, and the next second people will figure out, and you need to protect yourself. So they will activate the sympathetic nervous system. So the, the light detector, they will ask you uh, some, like the, the baseline question. So they will ask you a lot of questions. What's your name? What's your age? Uh, what's, your, what's your job? And build, they build up the, the solid baseline. What's your physiological response when you are telling the truth? And what's your physiological response when you are lying? Then they will ask you a serious question. Like they will try to find the murderer. They will ask you, okay, did you know this person, the victim? And when, where were you when this accident happened? Did you kill this person? And based on your response, physiological response, and they identify you're telling the truth, you're lying, or you're lying. So it's not 100% accurate. And some women don't need this. They can look at their eyes of their spouse and ask him, where were you last night? And they are able to do this. They detect the physiological response. So that's the light detector theory. And because the light detector, so in the beginning will tell you, okay, detect emotion. You can use the physiological response to identify emotion is this part. It's not 100% accurate. And some people, well, if they are super nervous, they look at the machine, they are, they are so nervous, their sympathetic system has been so activated. And even though they are telling the truth, the machine will say, you're lying. So uh, that's why nowadays in a court, uh, they, they use the light detector, but they also have other evidence because this, this is not 100% accurate. Or some people, they can train themselves being adept Repetition, right? So after six months, they repeat uh, exposed to this machine. They, they don't have this high physiological response, and they can get away with this machine. And that's what's happened in the, in the spy movies. Right? Some people can get away from this machine. Okay, let's go to the other uh, topic, anger. Why we need to be angry. And the theory of anger is frustration. Frustration caused. You want something and you don't get it, you feel so frustrated, it will cause anger. But not all people that feel frustrated, they will lead aggressive behavior. So it's not fully explained it, but it explains part of it. And frustration causes aggression. This is, it works, it works, and it will cause the fight or flight response in animals. Okay, they will they will fight, and also sometimes in some uh, sports competition sports, uh, they will actually as a, they will they will do it on purpose, trigger your anger, and it will increase your uh, their, their 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 chance to win the fight because well, when you're angry, your sympathetic system is activated, and it will trigger those sympathetic response. 
uh, in normal life, okay, what can cause frustration and aggression? Uh, frustration in sexual contest. That's uh, what happened, or sexual jealousy, both of them. Let's talk about both of them. That's when you look at the news and you found, okay, why this guy take a gun and kill his wife and sometimes uh, kids? Pretty sad story. And if you interview their neighbor, their neighbor will say, he's the, 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 the nicest guy I've ever met. And he's a good dad, he's a good father, good husband. I don't know why this happens. Frustration, because he found his his wife cheated on him. And when you are in those serious emotion, okay, emotion is controlled by, you found it's controlled by more original brain compared with the cortex which make us human. And you can get so frustrated and your cortex, the frontal cortex, actually think, don't do it, uh, it's not worth it. And sometimes that part is not working because you are dominated by the original brain area. and. That's when they do some something they regret uh, when they are very angry. Uh, let's look at one case study. This are no work. She she's the female uh, astronaut, and she uh, she's a very outstanding astronaut. She she received the training when she have uh, three kids, and she received all the training and she passed all the training. And she she went to the uh, the space mission, and she was responsible for controlling a a robot arm. So she's a superwoman, and she has beautiful family, three kids. His his husband, uh, her sorry, her husband always support her. However, uh, she fall in love with one of her her colleagues, and eventually she divorced her husband her husband say okay go to find what you love and she, she go to stay with his or uh, her boyfriend and when everything looks so perfect she can stay together with her boyfriend she found her boyfriend is dating another woman <laughs> that's when things turn sour right? and eventually she she got so angry so frustrated and her brain tell her, she's a very smart woman, but at that moment her brain tell her the only way to solve this problem is make her competitor disappear. Yeah, I know it doesn't make sense to us, but at that imagine the frustration she 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 felt. She gave up the whole family to be with her boy her boyfriend and suddenly find her boyfriend's cheating on on her. So she Draw from Houston to Florida, to Florida, and she put the diapers on the diaper used by the astronaut, so she does not have to stop to use the bathroom. She drove all the way from uh, Houston, Texas, to Florida, and to find her competitor, her boyfriend's new girlfriend, and she says she tried to talk, but she apparently she kidnapped her. Uh, tried to kidnap her and it's not working so she got caught so that's her story so this tell you uh, don't don't make serious decision when you are too emotional uh, because the emotion is controlled by the limbic system so it, that's more original brain area compared with your uh, cortex the area ask you to think reason it and sometimes the the powerful original brain area can overpower your cortex and you can make the wrong decision. Okay, let's look at the factor uh, affect the anger. What's the best factor to uh, predict predict the violent behavior and this is the past violence behavior. So if your boyfriend tell you I will change for you, uh, good luck with that because the past violent behavior is a good predict predictor. And also all this, uh, you found the environment, how they grow up, play a big role. Like the, if they've been physically abused, and if they see their parents fight, or alcohol, those drugs affect, or grew up in a violent environment. So you found that the the development play a big role. Okay, let's take a short break.